And uh, we ask now Aleha uh, Narosca Pisotska, again from Poland, the same topic. Good morning, Hello, everything. Uh, everyone. My topic is uh, rather on politics than on economic. We are again second part with a uh, special uh, problem, borderline. Um, this uh, notion is very important to me personally and for ethnomusicologists, I think, also. The category understood not only as the area of the permeation of neighboring nations' cultures, which is outlined by the lines of political and administrative divisions, but also as the situation of the social cultural contract, independent of borders and artificially imposed divisions. The cultural borderline becomes visible where the promoters of the containing cultural patterns make their presence. From the 90s, the notion of the borderland has become the most often quoted by sociologists and ethnologists in order to describe the identity of the ethnic groups inhabiting post-war Poland. It played an extremely substantial role in the change of perceiving region called regained territories. The notion of the borderland also turned out to be one of the most important cognitive categories for Missouri because it enabled an organized and logical look at first at the complicated cultural, linguistic, and religious legacy of Missouri, and then at the other regions inhabited by the Lutheran minority. These are the reasons why I'm going in my paper not only to sketch the problem of objective transformation occurring in Polish ethnomusicology, but also to describe the peculiar situation of the researcher exploring an unknown area in the changing political reality. The beginning of my studies coincided with the 90s. From the entire world of border and culture, I have mainly chosen areas inhabited by Lutherans because cultural phenomena diverge a lot from the current model. And those being characteristic of minority were present in the literature relatively seldom. In the analysis of the studies conducted in the area of the borderland from 1945 to 1989, I will try to answer the questions about what elements were emphasized and which were omitted or distorted. The problem of confronting official political vision with beliefs of the researcher and scientific reality seems to be very interesting and worth examining too. In order to understand the climate accompanying the field research right up to the completion of the warfare, one should consider the peculiar geopolitical situation of these regions, and especially the feelings of uncertainty and temporariness. They force people to adopt ideological explicit attitudes and impose practical popularizing actions. The following quotation describes this situation the best. I quote. In 1945, after a century of separation, the Bamian Mazurian district came back into the state border of Poland and brought to the common heritage not only the charm of its landscape, but also the irreproachable man with his indigenous rich culture with hardened advice, fight for national and social freedom. In People's Poland, this man was confronted with change living condition resulting not only from the change of the national sovereignty, but also from the victory march of the revolution. Today, we must, must stand up to the distorted attitudes of the part of the regained people who were formed in the salt atmosphere full of venom and hatred for anything that is Polish. With the real character of our national culture, we have to show the beauty of our folklore and to prove the close relationship and the unity of this culture with the culture of regained people. The manifest present above 
was expressed by Polish folklorists and referred admittedly to the area of Varnia and Mazuria, as northeast of Poland. But it can be perceived as the motto for the field research undertaken in all regain areas incorporated into the organism of the new formed Polish People's Republic. In philosophy like this, ambiguous and interspersing cultural phenomena which were arousing doubts weren't accepted. The message had to be clear. So, all efforts of researchers were concentrated on registering, registering and proving the Polish national identity of these regions and their residents. The author of the statement recapitulated this action very vividly. Regain people recovered songs. It was an official version, which was in accordance with the line of the civil service and the ruling party. So, in the first post-war years, it were, it were some books and sets of songs intended to be sung by folkmans and amateur, amateur choirs, which were being published first of all. In order to get the perfect image of Polish Mazuria problems like bilingualism of performances, Polish and the German, and the presence of the German repertoire legacy were being left unsaid. The singing was being recorded mainly in Polish, although in comments to individual songs one can find an information that the song was being sung in German also, also all the female singing learned the song at the German school. However, the selectivity of researchers did not concern the registered material only, but also the very performer. In appeals from remarks of field researchers that uh, they were choosing people who were singing exclusively in Polish, I quote, the sounds present here come from Polish people who settled on this soil from time immemorial. The distinguishing of these materials wasn't difficult simply because during the research of the oldest in the genus, inhabitants were sought out. The songs were usually sung by women. Sometimes one informant sang several dozen songs, giving us evidence of her excellent memory, and at the same time documenting the vitality of the song in spite of her tears of the captivity. Memories on German speaking Lufras residing in Mazuria confirm such one sided approach of the field researchers. It resulted in a strong resentment and the feeling of rejection provoked by, by researchers from Warsaw who didn't want to record them because the language of the song was not Polish but German. When we look through publications and articles from the post-war uh, 20 year period, we don't not find information about exceptionally hostile climate, which was accompanying during the collection of folklore in Mazuria. Instead, we more often find enthusiastic statements about the diversity of Polish repertoire legacy and monumental profiles of Mazurian performance. However, it appears from the field notes that the situation of the contemporary researcher was far more complex and extremely difficult to assess and ambiguous. I quote also from a record in a protocol from 1954. The female singer is anxious because of her neighbor's advice not to sing. They are probably also trying to frighten her by saying that something bad is going to happen to her. As a result, when we are asking Prostka is her name, about her name, which should be entered into the protocol, she is suspecting that we want to report her. People around are exceptionally nose and hostile. Luckily, we have almost, almost finished recording when, uh, when one of neighbors who couldn't bear the tension went into the room and sat down on the chair, looking around with the murderous expression. In hospitable people around us are facilitating the continuation of our work. And of work. The complicated situation of Marzuri and Lutherans is also related in short biographies of singers which were recorded on the spot. One can learn from them about forcing people to move to nursing homes, dramas of separated families, forcible emigration to Germany, and not even when disappointed cause, but it. Notes included in the protocols show that the researchers have doubts whether information written down by them will harm 
the singers. In protocols, you can find traces of intervention to the individual informants' defense by the member of the team of the institute in party communities and or provincial uh, authorities. One can suppose that the team conducting recording was aware of exceptionally difficult political situation in Mazuria. As a result, they distorted reality not only on account of the official political line, but also in order not to harm with the action to a resident who had been sorely tried by fate. The speculator speaking between the real situation and the official present one was also confirmed by the researchers who were conducting the recording. The information on this were surfacing, first of all, in our informal conversations. The conclusion, the conclusion is that the, a few hundred Lutheran songs were recorded in Mazuria, including a lot of German origin, mainly in order to prove to the authorities the vitality of Polish language, which was cultivated, thanks to Polish hymnals, leaflets, catechism, and prayer books. They were not denying to the Lutheran faith, but they were trying to convince the official bodies that it is not dangerous. Perhaps that is why some idealized image of the folk piety of Masurian was created with numerous common features with Catholic neighbors. The individual and unique ceremony of Masurian matterns uh, was being interpreted as the Polish nativity play grown up and adapted for the needs of Masurians. In the cultural repertoire, even though there were some of the German origin, some by some Polish poet Jan Kochanowski were being especially richly emphasized. With reference to the folk repertoire, remarks like this were obligatory. I quote, uh, the folk songs of Barn and Mazuria in principle adopt no German future and demonstrate a close relationship with the Polish folk, folk songs of other regions and organically belong to the old Poland folk music. End of quote. In order to prove this thesis, the authors first of all listed shared elements of the Mazovian culture, which were numerous examples of pastoral calls, types of existence of shepherd trumpet, Gava, some melodics and dance motif. At the same time, the offer were frequently ignoring melodies with an ambit which is not typical for Polish folklore, typical rhythm of words, or even the existence of foreign melodies. Such a view on the Mazurian culture lasts in principle all the way until, the, to, until a turning point after which it is finally possible to speak openly about Mazurian identity and to describe exactly all complex political and public uh, processes. In sociology, the, these no, new political conditions were used almost immediately, but in ethnomusicology, the change of viewpoint was a much slower process. A monograph on uh, Varnian Mazuria published in 2002 by the Institute of the Art is an example of the publication reflecting the transitional state. It was prepared long before 1989 and introduced by traditional view which was emphasizing the Polish national identity of the region and residents and a lot of elements which did not fit uh, in with the perfect image. It was only Cieszy Silesia, it's uh, south of Poland, where the population of Lutheran faith prevailed. On account of this, its history, which was at first connected with the Piast dynasty, next with Prussia, Austrian Empire, and in the end with the Second Republic of Poland, the area of Cieszy Silesia has always been recognized as the borderland, but rather in the geographical meaning, the studies of the 1945, unlike those carried out in Mazuria, were concentrated above all regional uh, elements. As it was expressed by uh, the author of one of the first songbooks published after the war, the intense folk movement of Indelski Silesia has been lacking in the regional songbook for a long time. It's impossible that in field research, carried out in the 50s in the Czechian area as part of uh, the action of collecting the folklore during which over 10,000 songs were recording, only a few were religious ones. This situation is strange insofar as the person conducting the recording was a Lutheran faith himself. 
and knew very well the repertoire of which is charged also in the laboratory. What is more, from certificates of the singer, we also know that many, many of them were of Lutheran faith. Perhaps the reason for this uh, omitting the religious repertoire was its non-Polish character, or perhaps the conviction that one should concentrate exclusively on the recording of the folk repertoire. The belief that religious songs from Cieszyn Salizia are of a mixed nature was shared by the Lutherans themselves. It was very clearly expressed by understanding hymnologist and folklorist Karl Kławiczka, uh, quoting. In the region of Cieszyn Silesia, which has the second biggest population of Polish Lutheran, in the hymnal by Hedgecott, there is also quite a lot of songs signed as Old Polish ones. But the Czech and Slovak song firmly affected it because Lutherans in Silesia had to its publishing like the occasional way of singing song from the Slovak hymna Citar Sanctorum by Jerzy Trzanowski. The quoted examples of position of researchers expressed by them in the area of Mazuria and Cieszyn Silesia, in spite of seeming differences, have a lot of common characteristics. Above all, they concentrate on some beforehand adopted vision or a stereotype to which suitable element of the culture are adjusted and unsuitable one are omitted. The introduction of the uh, notion of borderline permitted to move the center of gravity from formulating a closed stereotype vision of culture to an open and concentrated on an identity one. The criteria which were taken into consideration is in determin determining the identity were the following, shared territory, language, origin, religion, shared experiences, uh, customs, and relative isolation from strangers. The notion of the cultural borderland was acquired by the next generation of musicologists who had neither the burden of wartime memories nor political and ethnic prejudice, who tried to show the entire cultural panorama of this region or clear is that to ancestor by debating the separate study to the omitted group, for example, monograph on the culture of German speaking Lutherans. I mentioned um, before, at the beginning, uh, I assess the category of the culture of the land as particularly helpful in my own research on the musical tradition of Lutheran communities. Uh, as an example of the new interpretation, I recall a formation ceremony of Mazurian Matans called Lucia Mazurska Nagoda, regarded by many researchers as the minds of the Catholic, Polish Catholic native play. The significant for the practice uh, of alternating the singing of subsequent lines of the song by four choirs standing in different corners of the church was characteristic of the medieval dramatic form of Kvempas. Ten pastores lata very from Latin, and was documented for the first time in the 15th century in a manuscript on Hovenkult. The form was probably adopted by Mazurians and according to their needs set into appropriate decoration. There are evidences of the practice of Kvempas coming from various regions of Germany. Also, in some regional varieties, it is possible to discern certain analogies in the way of selecting props and the decoration. The introduction of the category of the culture of the land into a description of musical phenomena in Cieszyn Silesia allowed to notice the unusual symbiosis of Silesians and Lutheran faith, and to portray the musical repertoire of Cieszyn Lutherans not selectively, but as a whole, in a blend enab enable also to look truly at the Czech, Slovak, and German cultural legacy passed on through regional hymnals. Today, there is a lot of criticism of the pluralism and preferring ethnicity to the sense of nationality. All the more so, more so, one should appreciate the fact that the, at the beginning of the 90s, this omitted or shown in the false light communities were perceived as more significant. Also, the period after 1989 created a comfortable situation for the researchers because they didn't have to deter over what and how they are allowed to study, but over what and how they should do it.
this period enable as well a free flow of ideas and the possibility of participating in international forums, which has been of great importance. Also, thanks a lot for this absolutely excellent um, panel, which was also very critical of um, a lot of approaches. And so I started to wonder, how far are you actually um, in a situation? I mean, you presented quite um, modern, controversial um, ideas and concepts. Is this accepted within your own or uh, local discourses? Because I also think like our latest presentation on the borderlands and the interactions of different cultures, which uh, we all know also touches on very complex politi political issues uh, across Europe, must be received quite, uh, in a quite controversial manner, as well as um, the presentation on um, the juries, etc. So, um, have there been internal discourses in Poland on these issues? Are you the forefront of these perspectives, or is it a general trans uh, indication of general transformation? I mean, this applies to the four. <coughs> We don't know <laughs> yet, so I pose this uh, question point. Uh, we are in the, the uh, no, no, we don't know yet. Because I've discussed so different yeah. terms. So it's, it's uh, I have confessed that I uh, present this, uh, maybe not this, uh, not so. Uh, complicate, uh, not so, so compli uh, so. complete. 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 Sorry, uh, a not so complete uh, uh, version of uh, this paper. Uh, a few years ago, it was anniversary meetings of Polish, Polish musicologists, and I have confessed that. I have a long discussions with most of my colleagues. Why? Because uh, a lot of people are really engaged in, uh, in it and they uh, really believe that it's, uh, it's necessary to be like an, a, a, a guard of tra traditional music. Uh, I maybe why? Maybe before I, I feel like a, a, a very typical uh, uh, person from uh, X-ray generation, uh, I'm a, a little bit lost uh, <coughs> between uh, this uh, uh, jury's table and uh, stage. Uh, and I just want to <laughs> put this uh, question and, and to find a way for myself uh, as well. <laughs> um, I, I see it, uh, many, many problems, especially when, when I discuss it with, uh, with uh, people. May I also? Uh, sometimes I think that the... the oh, sorry, actually, I have another microphone. Uh, sometimes the critical approach also depends on, on, the, uh, uh, on your viewpoint and experiences. For example, to, to Teresa, what I could add, that for example, um, uh, publishing um, uh, CDs within booklets, it's not so much to avoid paying the honorars to, 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 to singers, it is to avoid paying tax, because in Poland there's zero tax for books and high tax for, for recording, so it is much cheaper to produce a book with a recording than just a recording, than pay, uh, uh, not paying honorars to folk uh, music music uh, performers in, within grants. It is not, uh, it, is, it would be hardly possible due to a certain financial regime. Uh, uh, um, the research grant is for research activities. Well, singing is not a research activity. So uh, when you apply for such honorars, your grant would be rejected. I know because I'm in such committees. So it is simply, you know, sometimes Cannot uh, skip certain certain uh, uh, formal uh, formal aspects. So it, it is not that uh, ethnomusicologists are greedy and one don't want to uh, uh, you know to 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 to, to pay the, to to folk performances. Uh, yeah. So please, more questions. Yes. I also ag agree that Gerda uh, Lechleina. It is a position of for all, all of us archivists to collect everything because we don't know 
what collections will be in demand in, in the future. We even complain when we gather together in the meetings of our network of Baltic and Nordic tradition archives that we live like in the cloud of uh, digital images, different uh, pictures and uh, records. People share so many interesting photographs, uh, how do they celebrate uh, Easter's, uh, how do they have a good time during the other holidays, they share their musical experiences, but only the very, very few of those records they give to our archives. And uh, one interesting remark about the competitions. Why do Lithuanian folklore ensembles take part in those competitions? Because the prize for the best group is uh, some hours in the recording studio and possibility to publish their CD. <laughs> and uh, therefore, they maybe don't like, but they, they prepare the program and uh, they perform as, as good as possible and uh, then they publish a CD. I wanted to ask uh, dear Arleta, how do Lutheran community uh, communicate 500 years of reformation in, uh, in Poland? Because it is a good possibility to invite uh, the guests uh, to attract uh, other communities and uh, to make this culture more vivid and open. Polish Lutheran celebrated this uh, grand occasion from uh, one year, I think, from the, uh, the Feast of uh, Reformation. Uh, uh, and uh, end of this uh, year uh, is uh, in the um, uh, November. It's uh, all the year with the conference, uh, conference in the university, church, uh, uh, with uh, guests from uh, abroad. It's very, very important uh, uh, year for Polish Lutherans, but not for politics, because uh, in Parliament uh, uh, they didn't know, say, uh, a year of reformation, but a year of um, uh, reform. It's not a reformation. It's not word uh, which uh, uh, they like. In our country, it was announced uh, a year of uh, reformation officially. Not in Poland. 